you have your Bibles, you can turn in your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, I'm looking on here once. I think it's on here. If you don't have your Bibles with you and you want to follow me, guess what? You can do. You're going to go, now wait a minute here. What's he getting at? You want to follow me? Open this up. That's not a Bible, right? No, it ain't a Bible. But you know what that is? That's a songbook. Guess what the title of my song, my message is? You look on your on your in that in your songbook, page five hundred and eleven. What is the title of that song? Victory in Jesus, Amen. That's something that Satan cannot take us. Take from us that victory in God. You know, and, and uh, I have to get my paperwork out of here. Somewhere it is. I have this Bible marked up. So my boy goes, Dad, your Bible's marked up pretty good. I said, yeah, it is, isn't it? Now, what happened to that? No, it's not on there. It's in here somewhere. I'll find it. I got verses... My, my eyes were watering pretty bad. And it says in there, verses 1, 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, it reads, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot his, who also loves him, who begotten him. By this we know we are love, we love the children of God when we love for him. And keep his commandments, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, burdensome, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith, whoever he, who, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. This song, I said this to a lot of people already. And this song, here's a song that was actually a message at one time or another. You know, it says up there, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I heard, as I was going through this, I was sitting down one, one, one Sunday and I thought, you know, I've got to get a message somehow. So I, I was reading this and I heard an old, old story. How the Savior came from glory. Well, you know what? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back through the Bible, find out what we read, what would, in, what would come with that message. I heard an old, old story, how the Savior came from glory. It's Matthew's chapter eight, 1, chapters 18, verses 18 to 25. The birth, now the birth of Jesus Christ was his foe. After his mother Mary betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, the holy angel of the Lord appeared and said to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary. Take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is, is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Then Joseph, being aroused from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took, took to him his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth her son, firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I heard that old, old story, how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary, so I looked up that, and that came out of Luke chapter, chapter 23, verses 39 to 46. And it says then, then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if, it, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation, and we indeed justly. For we receive due reward of our deeds. 
but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, it was about the sixth hour, and then the darkness over, all over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit myself. Having said this, he breathed his last. It says, he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. You know, I, as I was going forth on that, how many here know where you were born again, where you accepted Jesus Christ? We all should remember that. That should be the, one of the best days in your life, probably the best day in your life, is when you accept Jesus Christ in, as a personal Lord and Savior. You know that. And it says on that song there, it says, save a wretch like me. You know, I, I went through life all my, all, all life, um, well, up and I went to church, Sunday school. Over 13 years, per, perfect attendance in the church. I was Baptized in church. Confessed to know Jesus Christ in church. A member of a church. But truly did I know God? No, it was. No, I didn't. I didn't know Jesus Christ. I thought I did. 13 years of perfect attendance in Sunday school. Went to Bible school all the time. Graduated out of Bible school. Did that make me a Christian? Not any more than anybody else. I thought I was a Christian. It wasn't until I was over at Ebenezer Bible Church. One Sunday morning, God looked down on me and said, you're a hypocrite. You're not saved. You know what? I went up front. And I cried. Cried like a baby. Because I knew I was a sinner. I went up front and I got saved. Along with my wife and along with the Salford girls. I got saved. He saved a wretch like me. Because I was once lost, but now I'm found. If you're here today and you're not saved, please do it before it's too late. And then it said, and I saved a wretch like me. And I heard about his groaning and his pleasures, blood atoning. Then I, bear with me, my eyes were watering pretty bad. And I, trying to read, I was flipping back and I thought, what could it go with that? And then and in, and in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 2, and, uh, as I was reading that, I said, my, my children, these things are right to you, that you may, may not sin. And if you, anyone sins, we have an advocate of, with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he himself is a proposition, which is atonement for our sins. We have a, we have a God that atoned, atoned our sins, took our sins from him, put him on that cross that we may be saved. And also in chapter Four, I have another one to read. Romans chapter 3, verses 25. And it says, but the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through the faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no differences, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Being justified freely, he gave his grace through the redemption of that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a proposition, as a atonement by his blood through the faith and demonstrated his righteousness, because in for his forbearance, God had passed over sins that were previously committed, no, that, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and a justifier of one who has faith in Jesus. It says, reading on there, and it said, 
as I was reading there, I heard about his groaning and his flesh and blood turning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. When you repent to Jesus Christ, guess what? You no longer are part of Satan's crowd, but you won that victory. How many here ever went to a ball game or a soccer game or anything like that and your team won? What is it? They won the victory. When you accept Jesus Christ, guess what? Satan is defeated, but you got that victory. And then, as I was reading on, and I heard about his healing. And I repented a chapter. I'll go back here. to I skipped ahead of myself. I'm going back here to... And, he re, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. And in Luke chapter 15, verses 7 to 10, and it says, I say to you that likewise there will be more rejoicing, joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and over the 99 just persons who need no repentance. Or, or what? A woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp, squeak the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And then when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which is law I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there will be, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. One sinner. Christ said right there, the angels will rejoice over one sinner when you repent. You think, yeah, you're, got, you're filled up inside your joy. You have joy in your heart. I'm telling you one thing, not just you has that joy in your heart, but the angels in heaven are rejoicing over that one sinner that was saved and over the 99 who don't need it. Then in chapter, in verse 6, I got to get moving here. I don't want to hold you any more than I have to. Then, in, in, then I, in chapter, Matthew's chapter 4, verses 23 to 25, it also reads about how he healed people. And it says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and the healing of all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among people. Then his fame went throughout the area, and they thought brought to him all the sick who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Disopolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. He healed the sick. And it says about the healing, the cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. Also, it come back here to Luke chapter. Luke chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. And it says in there about, and at that very hour, many cured infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and many blind gave sight. And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the Baptist all these things. You have seen and heard, and the blind see, and the lame walk, and the lepers cleanse, and the dead hit, deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. He healed. He healed all, all that, were, that needed healed. Then I'm reading on in chapter I like what the, on the blind to see, he, he healed the, all, every, how many today, if you were today, you went to a doctor, and the doctor said, well, I can't do nothing for you. And there was a guy standing on the street in, in ragged clothes, and he says, I can heal you. How many are going to take that leap of faith and say, okay, heal me? 
How many? Well, that doctor can't heal me. How can this ragged old guy here heal me? What do you think? Jesus was dressed in plain clothes. He wasn't no scribe or Pharisee that stood out among the people. But people came to him. Why? Because he touched somebody and healed them. He gave them that victory. Then in Luke chapter 9, verses 25, it says in there, so they again called the man. This is about the man that was born blind. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but the works of God should be revealed in him. And what did that man want? He said, I've been blind since birth. So the scribes and Pharisees want to get behind him and say, who, t who healed you? Who, who, who gave you sight? So again, they called the man who was blind and said to him, give, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. He was blind, and now he sees. Then in verse 9, as I was reading on there, it caused the walk, caused the blind, the lame to walk again, caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come into my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. And I heard about a mansion. He has built for me in glory. You know, as I was reading on that, I thought, okay. It says about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And it says in there, the 12 gates in verse 20, chapter 21, verses 23. It says the 12 gates were the 12 pearls, and each individual gate was a pearl. And the streets of the city were like, were pure gold, like transparent glass. It says, I heard about the mansion. Jesus Christ is building us a mansion. You may live in an old ratty shack. You may live in, in nothing. But if you got Jesus Christ in your heart, you're living in a mansion already. Amen? The streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And then it says, and I showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal. I'll never forget, anybody here ever fished down at Stony Creek, down at Dolphin? I know one thing, I did, and that water is pretty clear. And I thought, boy, I don't look far down there. I thought I'd just step down there and walk across. Well, I stepped down, and you know what happened, Butch? And it went over my hip boot. Guess what? That water might have been clear, but I, I could see the bottom. But I didn't know how deep it was. Just imagine that water clearer than clearer can be. Beyond that crystal sea, that river flowing from the tree of life, which gives fruit 12, time, 12 different fruits a year, 12 different fruits all the time, every month. You know, it says in the middle of the street, on the either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, and each tree yielding its fruit in every month. And the leaves of the tree were healing for the nation. Blessed is, are those who do his commandments, that they have the right to the tree of life, and, the, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual morality and murderers and adulterers, whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify to you these things. In the churches, I am the root of the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Jesus Christ is coming back. If you're not right with, Jesus, with God, I hope it's, time's not, time is wasting. Don't waste, time, don't waste God's time. God's not going to deny you. God's not going to say, well, you've done your time. I, I don't want nothing to do with you. God never, never says that. God loves each and every one of them. He is coming back someday, and guess what? That day could be today. It's very are. 
Where are you going to spend eternity? Are you going to have victory in Jesus or are you not going to have that victory? Where are you going to spend eternity? I'm going to leave you with that. Let us bow our heads. Our gracious and heavenly Father, I hope this message came forth like you wanted me to, to receive it and to give it to these people. Dear Lord, there's so many here that, that we all love Jesus Christ. We all know who Jesus is. And I know you're coming back and you're com coming back soon. We don't know the hour or the day or the time, but we know you're coming back because your fulfillment, your prophecies are being fulfilled. Dear Lord, help these people that have loved ones that aren't saved. Teach them to pray for them. Give them the courage to stand up and say, you're a sinner. You need repentance. Dear Lord, help us and bless all the fathers and the grandfathers and all the ones that taught us the right from wrong. In Jesus' precious name, amen.